That infectious laugh belongs to Josie Bailey. She's a rambunctious four-year-old who loves playing with her younger brother in her backyard just outside of Columbus. It's sometimes a challenge, though, to get Josie to slow down and take a break. <laughs> but one thing that manages to capture her attention is a magazine. It, it's so pretty. It's called High Five, and it's the younger sister publication to the long-running Highlights magazine. Josie will look at the same magazine every day and find new stuff. She gets really excited just recognizing different animals in the magazine. Mouses and foxes and bunnies and birdies. Josie really loves um, taking a marker or a pen and she likes to draw her own illustrations. He has two eyeballs in there. Something that the Baileys love is that they also read highlights growing up. I think the coolest thing about Highlights Magazine is it still looks the same, it still feels the same, so um, whereas a lot of other things have kind of changed over time, um, I feel like they're enjoying the same magazine that we enjoyed as kids. Mm -hmm. Hopefully they'll turn out as great as us. <laughs> <laughs> that same look and feel Mallory describes isn't an accident. There are certain things that appear in every issue of Highlights. We call those our legacy features, and they're non-negotiable there in each issue. So for example, we always have a hidden picture in every issue of Highlights. In fact, there's been a hidden picture in every issue of Highlights since June 1946, the very first one. You heard it right. June 1946, nearly 75 years ago, Highlights debuted its first magazine and its longest running feature, Hidden Pictures. The visual puzzle that pushes kids to focus and find small pictures inside a larger scene. And that's not the only feature to stay consistent for generations. Still in every issue is the Timber Toes, a simple illustrated story centered around a wood-carved family, which debuted in Highlights in 1951. And of course, the wholesome Goofus and Gallant, a comic featuring two contrasting characters, Goofus modeling bad behavior and Gallant modeling good. They first appeared in the pages of Highlights in 1948 and are still a legacy feature today. Goofus and Gallant in 1951, Goofus and Gallant in 2019. There's an evolution in animation and everything, but there's still a very common theme between the two of them. Part of its appeal to young children is its lack of ambiguity. I mean, it's a little black and white. It's practice for the big, harder moral decisions that are gonna come later. Yeah, I love that kids still love it today. We're always aspiring to be our gallant, but also if I do something that's a little goofus, how do I make up for it? How do I apologize? How do I make things right? Highlights CEO Kent Johnson knows a thing or two about Goofus and Gallant. His great-grandfather, Dr. Gary Cleveland Myers, created the comic and founded Highlights Magazine with his wife, Caroline, just after World War II. I like to say I did everything I could in my life to not join the family business, and I failed at it. According to Johnson, the mission of the business he runs today, headquartered in Columbus, has essentially stayed the same. We have to be dynamic, we have to adapt to what's going on in the world, and yet the foundational values and principles, our commitment to children, uh, remains the same as it was at, at day one. Something else that hasn't changed, according to Johnson? Kids. I think adults believe that everything's changed for kids. You know, the world's changed so quickly, like being a child now has got to be so different. You know, we've got devices and it's busy and, and all of these things. But what we know is kids still, still have some of the same issues they've had since 1946. How do I get along with my siblings? What happens when I have a falling out with my best friend? So those things are universal. Those things aren't changing. And French Collie says Highlights knows kids well, not through consultants or focus groups, but by communicating directly with them the old-fashioned way. How do you find out what kids want to see? One of the things we do that I think is the best way to keep our fingers on the pulse of our readers is that we answer every letter and email we get from children, and we've done that for years. You might be surprised to see the kinds of letters we get from kids. They write to us about their deeply held hopes and dreams and fears. It's as if we are there really very best friends. We learn a lot about kids from what kids tell us. 
I think we really are the publisher with the most authentic dialogue with kids. Rather than take their word for it, we decided to visit our own panel of experts. We're talking about Highlights magazines. Has anybody seen Highlights magazine before? Yeah? Well, we have a bunch of Highlights magazines for you to read today. And then after a little bit, we're going to talk to you a little bit more. Does that sound good to you? Yeah. OK, cool. Miss Burke Halter's third grade class at Evening Street Elementary School, not too far from Highlights headquarters, okay. had a lot to say about the magazine. <gasps> Come look at it. I learned about the, the sea slug because I didn't know about this yet. I liked how it has like articles, and then it also has like um, stuff that you can like make, and it has like little word searches. I like Goofus and Gallant because Goofus shows you him misbehaving, and Gallant is showing you how to behave. They always have a couple silly things in there. There's also some serious things, like, I don't know, this is funny. But they were pretty unanimous about what they liked best. I like the hidden pictures. There's the butterfly back there. Well, I like them because you have to like focus like on the little things instead of just the big things around. For the hidden pictures, it's not easy. Like it's not in like a corner, like a corner. It's like in people or like on people. It's challenging and it's fun. Hidden pictures, the longest running feature in the magazine, was also the most popular among this crowd. Miss Burkhalter's class was no stranger to the magazine. In fact, it's been a familiar sight in classrooms and in doctor's offices by design since the 1950s. So the dentist's office, the school program, those were ways to reach kids where they are. But being where the kids are in an increasingly digital world means expanding beyond the physical pages of a magazine. We get to play games the majority of our day. so can't complain about that. <laughs> in terms of digital, we definitely bring the same experience that the magazine brings to life in a digital format. We are creating those deeply engaging, fun, enriching experiences. It just happens to be in a different medium. Highlights has two websites, a podcast, a handful of apps, and is further expanding its digital presence. One feature that's translated seamlessly to digital media. See how bad I am at it. <laughs> That's right, hidden pictures. We've seen through a lot of companies who find success in evolving and growing, but there's also this push-pull of not straying too far from your original message, not straying too far. So how do you deal with that push-pull? So I often say inside the company, I say we're not a magazine company. And in fact, we never were. People look at me and they say, what are you talking about? You started as a magazine. I think the founders were about the impact they wanted to have on children. So if we keep in mind that we're not committed to magazines, we're not committed to a particular channel, we're not committed to a certain product type or technology, what we're committed to is making a positive impact on children, that frees us up to think what has to stay the same. Certain values, certain beliefs about children stay the same. Everything else can change. It was with those values in mind, Johnson said, that Highlights decided to release a statement last June. It wasn't directed at their young audience, but rather their adult followers on social media. As we thought more and more about our values and the idea that we think all kids should have access to the resources that help them become their best selves, we were internally looking out at the world and saying there's a situation where that's not the case. And we had no real way to have a positive impact on those kids. And what we then concluded was maybe we could make a statement to help reframe the conversation around the impact our policies and how our policies were being implemented around the impact they were having on kids. According to our, our mission of children so the world's most important people, came together on this statement, went through some drafts and editings to make sure we got it perfect, and then it's a little scary when you know you've got something big coming out and you like press post on, on social. The letter specifically condemned the policy of separating immigrant children from their families, saying, quote, This is an appeal to elevate the inalienable right of all children to feel safe and have the opportunity to become their best selves. Probably not even a minute later, there were already comments pouring in, people liking, people sharing, um, people going back and forth, fighting with each other a little bit in the comments. And there are definitely people that, that had that opinion of, you know, highlights, why are you 
being in politics or why would you say something like this? And a lot of our audience came in and defended us and said, you know, look at their statement, read what they said. Their mission is that children are the world's most important people. And that is what they're expressing with this, that, you know, just because they're kids at the border doesn't mean that they're not still kids. Well, it made headlines and went viral, garnering over 23,000 retweets. Our own kids in our community, whether it's here in Columbus where I am or anywhere else, like they're watching us as adults and they're taking lessons from whether we say or do anything about the things that maybe aren't quite as right as we'd like in our society. And back in Ms. Burkhalter's class, the students are taking lessons from highlights, whether they're looking at it from behind the screen. Oh, I like this because it's like reading an actual one, but you just have to hold it. You don't have to flip, you just... Or the way kids have been reading it since 1946. I prefer magazines because then you can actually draw on them and you might not be able to do that on an iPad. And she's certainly not the only one who feels that way.